I'll try to make out an argument for the claim that the case for animal rights is as strong as the case for human rights. Second, if humans have rights, then many animals have rights as well. Third, if humans don't have rights, then we have to account for our moral duties to humans in some other way. And fourth, whatever considerations we appeal to, to account for our duties to humans, will apply mutatis mutandis to many animals, and so we will have direct duties to these animals as well. Okay, so now I want to talk about the case for animal rights, um, most fully developed um, by Tom Reagan, who was here two weeks ago. Um, but I want to look in, with a little more depth into the actual argument, the philosophical argument for thinking that animals have rights. Um, now, Reagan's strategy is to say, well, let's take some sorts of beings that we all agree have rights. Normal adult human beings. We generally all agree that normal adult human beings have rights. Normal adult human beings are moral agents and have rights in virtue of being moral agents. Sometimes it's put that way. Um, now, Reagan wants to try to figure out, well, let's just look at human rights and try to figure out why humans have rights. If we can figure that out, then we can figure out whether or not um, animals have rights. Okay. And so Reagan is also concerned with trying to figure out the moral theory that best accounts for our duties to human beings. And he thinks that the rights view is the best view. He starts by looking at three different approaches. One he calls indirect duty views. Now these are, of course, views for the treatment of animals. Um, Indirect, according to indirect duty views, all of our duties to animals are really indirect duties to humans. Okay, so there's nothing I can do to an animal that would directly wrong the animal, just like there's nothing I could do to your car that would directly wrong your car. If I take a baseball bat and smash out a headlight or break the windshield, I don't wrong the car, I wrong the owner. I've damaged your property. Similarly, maybe if I take a baseball bat and break your dog's leg, I haven't done anything wrong to the dog, but I've done something wrong to you. I've damaged your property. So that's one version of an indirect duty view. Another version um, uh, associated with Kant is, well, look, if I become cruel to animals, then I will get desensitized to cruelty and be much more likely to be cruel to human beings. There are a lot of psychological studies that show that people who abuse animals move on to abuse children and then move on to abuse women. So if that's the case, well, you don't really have any duty whatsoever not to be cruel to the dog. The duty is really a duty to humanity, not to be cruel to humanity, and you don't want to do things that are going to make it more likely that you would be cruel to humanity. So in indirect duty views, we don't have any direct duties to animals. In fact, all of our duties regarding animals are ultimately duties to human beings. Reagan will argue that that view is unsatisfactory. Direct duty views, uh, uh, according to direct duty views, our duties to animals are direct duties to the animals themselves. And then according to the rights view, Reagan's preferred view, Animals have rights and deserve to be treated in ways that respect those rights. Okay, so what he's going to do is give what philosophers call an argument from elimination. He's going to look at the three main approaches, argue that the first two are unsatisfactory, and that the only viable approach is the rights view. So, step one. All, this is, now I'm just, I'm not going to always say Reagan says, Reagan says, I'm just re representing, reconstructing Reagan's argument here. Reagan says, I said I wasn't going to say that, but uh, anyway, he does. He says that all indirect duty views fail. So first, uh, we distinguish moral agents from moral patients. Moral agents are beings capable of acting morally and immorally. Such beings must possess a sense of right and wrong and be able to guide their conduct by appeal to moral norms. Moral patients, on the other hand, are beings capable of being acted upon in morally significant ways. They're beings capable of being harmed or benefited 
wronged or treated rightly, but they're not, well, okay, so that, leave it like that, but when we typically talk about moral patients, we mean moral patients who aren't moral agents. Um, and that would be infants, perhaps the severely retarded, um, perhaps human beings in the throes of senile dementia who are no longer capable of, of moral agency themselves, we still think that there are right and wrong ways to treat those human beings. So um, they're not moral agents, but they are moral patients. Now, all indirect duty, according to, to Reagan, all indirect duty views fail because there's no non-arbitrary reason for restricting the duty not to harm individuals, only to moral agents. Okay. Um, now, there are some people who've tried to do that with contract theories that say, look, the only people that, are, that have rights, the only beings that have rights are beings who can agree to the social contract. If you can't agree to the social contract, you're not covered by the contract. And of course, if they're consistent, then they say, Ch young children, infants, the senile and the retarded don't have rights. Okay, so anyone who thinks that children, infants, the retarded and the senile do have rights will think that the contractarian view fails and that it's not an adequate reason for um, restricting rights only to moral agents. Then Reagan looks at two main sets of direct duty views. One he calls cruelty kindness views, cruel acts are wrong and kind acts are right, and the other utilitarian views like the views of Peter Singer um, and Bart Grzalski, um, there's an egalitarian component, everyone's interests count equally, and a utility maximizing component, according to which the right action is that action which results in the best aggregate consequences for all affected out of all your options available. So really, I mean, in simple terms, utilitarianism, uh, it's a consequentialist theory. It says the right action on any given occasion is the action with the best consequences for everybody affected out of all the options available. So why, do, why does Reagan think these views fail? First, he tells us not all kind acts are right. The kind racist who acts kindly only to members of her own race does not act rightly, according to Reagan. Um, here I might quibble and say it's not obvious that the person's not acting rightly. We might distinguish right action from just action, where justice often concerns a dis distribution component not necessarily covered just by the notion of right and wrong. He also says the absence of cruelty does not guarantee right conduct either. A first trimester abortion may not be cruel, since at that stage in the fetus's development, um, there doesn't seem to be sufficient neural uh, activity for um, feeling pain. But that alone does not determine whether um, abortions are right. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is just because I think this will be relevant later. Let me just back up and say, I'm not sure he's actually shown that that the cruel acts are wrong and kind acts are right view fails. Um, especially take the cruel acts are wrong view. What he's done is try to argue against the cruel acts are wrong by giving us an example of a cruel act, I'm sorry, of a non-cruel act that might not be right. Okay. But that's not what the first claim says. It says all cruel acts are wrong. So if he really wants to refute that, he has to find a cruel act that's perfectly morally permissible. He hasn't given us one of these. So even though the, 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 the inference may not go in the other direction, we might have a sufficient condition for wrongness, something like unnecessary cruelty is wrong. Okay? All right. Anyway, these are the reasons he thinks the... Uh, Cruelty kindness view fails. As for the utilitarian view, he agrees with the egalitarian aspect of utilitarianism, but he rejects the maximization principle. Utilitarianism fails, according to Reagan, because it has the following unacceptable result. Individuals can be sacrificed for trivial gains in the common good. Okay. And he, of course, 